What's up guys? This is Hardy from Digital Painting Studio and today we are going to finish our character squad. A lot of work has gone into this. This is always the big payoff moment. So one more very cool character to design and paint and then we will assemble everybody together for our awesome payoff shot. It's going to be great. We're going to talk about one more really important archetype, the sidekick. Then I will show you exactly how I put all of these squads together. We'll talk about portfolios, kind of why these are valuable, and we'll just wrap the whole challenge up. It's gonna be awesome, a lot to unpack, so let's jump in. So our fourth and final character is a sidekick archetype. What squad would be complete without a lovable kind of mascot type character? So I'm designing this little robot, kind of Star Wars droid type of energy. I want him to be simple. I want him to be small. I want him to be really engaging and relatable. So I'm putting a lot of effort into making sure he has like a face that we can engage with. He's kind of going to be a walking eyeball. And I also want him to be very expressive. I think a sidekick needs to really be the personality, the kind of lovable underdog of the group. And that's definitely what this robot's going to do with us. I'm putting a lot of attention into the pose that his little quadruped legs are in. I want to make sure that feels very warm and animal-like, so more like a, a puppy than a spider. So I've got one little leg kind of lifted like he's, he's mid stride. I think that's a really important detail. I also have his head sort of looking around expressively like he's very engaging. Incredibly subtle stuff, but if I don't get that right, he's just gonna end up feeling like a spider, which I don't want. I don't want him to be this cold mechanical thing. I want him to be something that we are emotionally invested in. Let's talk about a sidekick archetype's attributes. Physically, they are often small. They're often cute. So I'm trying to check both those boxes here. We need to be like, we need to love this thing. We need to want to protect it. We need to want to kind of have it with us as we go through our adventures. So some famous ones, I mean, obviously pick your droid, your little like non-verbal droid from Star Wars, R2-D2 or BB-8 definitely come to mind. Uh, you can go with any kind of like the fairy in Zelda that says, wait, listen 10 million times in Ocarina of Time. Little thing that is around you to help you to kind of keep you company on your adventure and to just be this sort of adorable little thing that rounds out the more like hardcore violent parts of your squad because obviously everybody up to this point has had a giant gun. So let's do something that's not that for this final thing just to give it contrast. Um, right, so the personality, we want this guy to feel expressive kind of like a puppy dog sort of tilting its head at us a little bit, something we can really engage with. A sidekick can have many uses in a story. They can help you kind of be the assistant. If it's, uh, I'm thinking of uh, Battlefront 2, that droid that rode on the main character's back and would sort of hack open doors and stuff. I thought that was really cool. They can sort of help you out in that way. Maybe they crawl through a vent to unlock a door on the other side. Um, obviously a sidekick can be a human too. They can be just a, a kid or a smaller person. I'm kind of stuck in a sci-fi or fantasy frame of mind for this, but obviously sidekicks can certainly be people. Sidekicks can also be this way to show bravery because they are small, because they are not strong physically, 
Often they can be put in situations where they have to be really brave. They can kind of be the inspiration, the spark, the, the soul of the squad, kind of a mascot. I know that's, that's often kind of a, a term that seems to reduce a character, but it also has value. There's sort of this symbol that everybody can rally behind, this lovable thing that everybody likes. There can also be situations where, let's say all of the strong characters in our squad have been captured or something, but they forgot about the little sidekick. So then the sidekick goes and breaks everyone out of space jail or whatever. Lots of fun, different nuanced uses for this type of character, but at the same time, you don't really have to overthink this. Sort of small, cuter thing that kind of rounds out the more hardcore elements of the squad, you can't lose. Really cool, I love how this character has shaped up. I think color scheme, definitely his expressiveness, his pose, the way he's kind of looking up and his little robot eyes really engage us. That's pretty much perfect. He fits with the genre. He's a nice little balance element to our squad. So I think we can call this guy done and we can start putting the squad together. I love this. This is such a payoff moment because these are hard to design and paint. There's no doubt about it. Characters are about the most challenging thing that concept artists create. And when you have got four, you know, you've really put effort into this four full times, seeing them all together, seeing them kind of standing next to each other in this hero shot is really cool. So basics, I just have a merged version of each character on a layer. That's it. Just kind of group everything from your rendering, make a copy of the group, and then hit Command E, merge it, and you end up with a single merged layer for each character, which I've just got in a Photoshop document. So I can move the characters around and you can just position them, scale them, make sure that they are lined up correctly next to each other. As I mentioned in a past video in the series, we wanna make sure that we avoid weirdness. We don't want anyone's gun pointing at their neighbor's face or anything. So things like that. We also wanna make sure that the characters fit together. We're kind of composing a shot here. We want everybody to make a nice shape statement. So I love how we have kind of huge character, tall character, medium character, and tiny character. It just rounds out this whole shape statement in a really pleasing way. And that's basically it. I'll be adding some shadows under their feet. I'll be doing a little bit of blooms and glows, a few things to kind of make the characters in the background sit back a little bit, kind of putting a little fog back there. But that's about it. We basically just put the characters together, compose them in a pleasing way, and we've got an incredibly valuable hero shot for our portfolio piece. So why are these so cool? Why are they so valuable for your portfolio? So I love this approach to a portfolio. Actually, my opinion is that the best portfolio often is no portfolio. It's putting together a targeted example sheet of whatever job you're going after. And this is one of those. If I am applying for a character art job, I would just send something like this to that prospective client. It, it puts my best stuff right in front of them instantly. It shows that I can design and paint four very different kinds of characters. It shows that I can make it consistent. I can kind of do some world building where I can build multiple pieces of a squad and have it all work together. It can show that diversity, that cool different stuff going on, but also it's cohesive. It looks like it comes from the same world. So I think that is a huge asset to keep in your passive portfolio, but also to have handy when you are going out to apply for job.
If you want to expand on this, it's a great idea to grab one of these characters and do a full sheet of them. So show what the character looks like from the back. Show them with a few different facial expressions. Pick some detail, like maybe the big guy's tattoos, and show some different variations, different hairstyles. We could do a breakdown of, of what his gun looks like in detail. What do the bullets look like? That really nuts and bolts concept art stuff just shows your prospective employer that you can solve problems. You can really describe things completely and you can show a lot of creativity. You can show a lot of cool ideas. It just makes an even more valuable piece. So this sheet by itself, I think is about the strongest thing you can have to show that client a lot of different skills at once. But if you're looking for next steps, I think taking a single character and doing a full descriptive sheet is a great idea, huge portfolio asset as well. Guys, that's about it for this one. I hope you have enjoyed this series. If you are participating in the character challenge, I hope you love the squad that you have put together. I can't wait to see what you guys do with that, and I can't wait to see how it all shakes out when voting starts at the end of April. That's gonna be a ton of fun, and thanks to everyone who's participating. That's it for now, guys. I'll see you all soon, but in the meantime, good luck with your artwork. Paint something cool today.